Animal experts describe thousands and thousands of new species every year, and this year has already seen some amazing new discoveries. There have been newly described species from nearly every continent. Sometimes these creatures are completely new ones that have never been studied by scientists before. Other giant squids have been caught in the Japanese seas, including this one in January 2013. And sometimes it's a case of a species and its subspecies being examined more closely. As you're about to see, we can learn a lot from our animal friends. 15 Strangest Creatures Recently Discovered Part 2 Siphonophore <laughs> apolemia Believe it or not, these weird creatures are related to jellyfish. What could be the longest animal ever recorded? A weird and wonderful sea creature 150 feet in length has been caught on video for the first time by researchers off the coast of Australia. The Siphonophore apolemia was spotted by a crew aboard a research vessel as they plumbed the depths of deep sea canyons in search of new species. Siphonophores are typically long, thin, transparent floaters that occupy the open ocean. They emit light to lure in potential prey and use jet propulsion to move through the water. What further distinguishes siphonophores, however, is that in reality, they're not officially one single organism. Instead, it's a colonial organism, a collection of zooids that gather into a functional colony. Different types of zooids have different roles. Some help with propulsion, others with buoyancy, and others for digestion or reproduction. The gelatinous colony is made up of thousands of individuals, specialized clone bodies that work together as a team. In effect, the siphonophores clone themselves, producing a vast chain of specialized bodies that are usually genetically identical. When they saw this strange creature, they decided to act immediately. It appears to be a fleshy ball with odd limbs and remarkably human face and pig ears. Could this be cloning gone wrong? Already, scientists have cloned 11 kinds of animals, including sheep, cows, pigs, mice, and horses. As researchers continue to refine their techniques and clone even more animals, some people are worried. So far, cloned animals haven't fared well, critics say. Few cloning attempts are successful. The animals that do survive tend to die young. It's not that one particular thing goes wrong or one specific aspect of development goes awry, researchers say. Rather, the cloning process seems to create random errors in the expression of individual genes. Those errors can produce any number of unpredictable problems at any time in life. And maybe this strange peak creature is the result of mixing animal DNA with human DNA. It's tough to say because outside of this single image of a nurturing woman holding an unrecognizable animal, there's no other information. But maybe you'll have some ideas as to what it could be. Make your best hypothesis in the comments below and make sure you use the hashtag open discussion when you do. Chupacabras While stories about the mysterious chupacabra have spread far and wide, real information about a curious-looking creature with that name is virtually non-existent. In some circles, it's considered the pet animal of alien visitors. Others believe it's the result of a NASA experiment gone wrong. Have these folks actually captured one? Stories of the chupacabra, which mean goat sucker in Spanish, spread mainly in Latin America, the southwestern part of the U.S., and other Spanish-speaking areas. Many people assume that the phenomenon goes back hundreds of years, but it's really only been talked about since the 1990s. It wasn't until the summer of 1995 in Puerto Rico that people started connecting the name El Chupacabra with the fearsome four-legged creatures thought to prey on other animals. This creature has since been reported as far north as Maine, as far south as Chile, and even outside the Americas in countries like Russia and the Philippines. All of the reports have been disregarded as uncorroborated or lacking evidence. As with Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, and the other bizarre beasts in urban legend, the tales of the chupacabra thrives on the very active imagination of the public. Darter fish. These fish have been described as the hummingbirds of the fish world. Colorful, small, and quick, the name darter comes because these fish are seen to dart around in their habitat. With 150 known darter species, their diversity or form of color are enough to keep many obvious and biologists forever content. These unique fish are endemic to North America, where they're found in the Mississippi River Basin and the drainages of the Great Lakes, the seaboards of the Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. 
plus the Pacific coast of Mexico too. Darters prefer the fast-moving currents of shallow water in creeks and small rivers. They also have a preference for gravel or rocky bottom streams. Typically, adult fish are found in faster and deeper running waters, while younger rainbow darters are more common in slower, shallower areas and pools. Darters are considered shy and stay hidden for most of the day, between or along rocks unless they're looking for food or reproducing. During the breeding season, both male and female colors become brighter. When females are ready for spawning, they travel to pools where the males live. Males that are more colorful have a higher chance of mating. It's the fish coloring that has made them a popular aquarium fish as well. Giant Squid You normally don't see these monsters of the sea in shallow water. Giant squid live up to their name. The largest giant squid ever recorded by scientists was almost 43 feet long and may have weighed nearly a ton. They're one of the world's largest invertebrates and belong to an ancient group of mollusks called cephalopods, like octopus. Squid have eight arms and two tentacles with spiked suckers that help grasp and pull prey toward their beaks. You'd think such a huge animal wouldn't be hard to miss, but because the ocean is vast and giant squid live deep underwater, they remain elusive and are rarely seen. But after years of searching, a group of scientists filmed a giant squid in its natural habitat for the first time after researchers suspended bait beneath a research vessel to try and hook a giant squid. As the camera filmed, the research team pulled a 24-foot squid to the surface, alive, enabling people around the world to finally see a living, breathing giant squid. Nobody knows how many giant squids there are or how many different species may exist. However, sightings are likely what inspired tales of the ship-destroying kraken from Scandinavian mythology. Glass Octopus with Transparent Skin A video of a glass octopus captured by a team of researchers has people fascinated. How could it not? You can see right through it. There's something incredible about watching the animal showing off its see-through skin while gliding through water. The glass octopus is a nearly transparent pelagic species of octopus found worldwide in tropical and subtropical latitudes. The only visible feature of the octopus are its optic nerve, eyeballs, and digestive tract. The glass octopus lives in deep waters of the ocean, where sunlight doesn't reach. There have been very few sightings of the octopus in the wild, thanks to its elusive nature and the depths at which it survives. However, researchers led a 34-day trip to the Pacific Ocean, where they managed to capture footage of the glass octopus in the wild. Using a remotely operated vehicle, scientists were able to observe two glass octopuses. Before this expedition, there's been limited live footage of the glass octopus, forcing scientists to learn about the animal by studying specimens found in the gut contents of predators. The video left people mesmerized, and many shared various comments to express their astonishment. Some wrote either stunning or amazing to express their reactions. Headless Chicken Monster No, it's not a B-movie horror franchise, nor is it even a chicken but it is a creature feature you have to see to believe. It's actually a type of sea cucumber. Juveniles are usually pale pink in color, and adults' color range from crimson, dark red, and reddish brown. The most unique characteristic of the headless chicken monster is the composition of its body, which is covered in a thin leathery skin and made up almost entirely of a gelatinous mass with a density slightly less than water. Because of this lighter density, there's natural buoyancy in the animal, it's likely that it can also change the density of its gelatinous mass to vary the depth of which it floats. This allows it to adapt to different depths of water. This lighter-than-water body allows the headless chicken monster to float effortlessly just above the seafloor, expending very little energy to move around. The headless chicken monster has no bones, but it does have an endoskeleton, like skeleton inside the body, which lies beneath its skin. This is made up of a very thin and simple calcium-based webbing that easily compresses to the extreme pressure of the deep sea without breaking. The headless chicken monster has retained just enough muscle to perform the basic function of living. Millipede Millipedes are cendrilical or slightly flattened invertebrates. They're not insects. They're actually more closely related to lobsters, shrimp, and crayfish. The word millipede translates to a thousand feet, but while millipedes have many feet, none of them quite have a thousand. Most species actually have fewer than a hundred. 
Their bodies are split into a number of segments, and each segment has two sets of legs that attach to the body's underside. Millipedes look very different from their centipede cousins, which have one set of legs per segment that stick out on the body's sides. There are 7,000 species of millipede in the world, and 1,400 of these occur in the United States and Canada. The smaller ones are less than an inch in length, but the common millipede can grow to more than five inches. Moist soil beneath decaying leaf litter or mulch is a millipede's prime habitat. Millipedes lack stingers or pinchers to fend off predators like birds, toads, and small mammals. Instead, they rely on their hard exoskeleton as the first line of defense. Some species can even produce hydrogen cyanide, a noxious liquid that's toxic to small animals. Millipedes are mostly harmless to people. Sea toad. Sea toads are among the more unusual fish occasionally observed. They're bottom-dwelling fish found on the continental slopes of the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans, at depths of at least 8,000 feet. They have large bodies and short compressed tails and are covered with small spiny scales. The largest are about 12 inches in length. They're able to take in high volumes of water, increasing their total body volume by 30%. They're popular subjects for underwater photographers because of their unusual shapes and colors, and because they rarely move. They have a lure on their snouts, often on a long stalk, that they use to attract small animals that they eat. The lure is rounded with numerous, small filaments that make it look like a tiny mop. Sea toads live at depths where there's little or no sunlight to let their lures be seen. How do sea toads use their lure to attract prey? We don't know the answer but we can guess. However, we know almost nothing about the biology of sea toads other than where they live, so the way that their lures function remains a mystery for now. Sea toads are mostly sedentary fish and rely on a more opportunistic way of hunting where they prey on anything within reach. Platypus. At a glance, it looks like a hodgepodge of animal pieces stitched together, a paddle-shaped tail from an otter, a sleek body covered in dense chestnut-colored fur like a mole, a wide, flat, duck-like bill attached in front of its little round eyes, and big webbed feet like a pelican. All of these characteristics come in handy for the platypus freshwater lifestyle. That bizarre-looking bill is laden with thousands of receptors that help them navigate the murky depths and detect tiny movements of potential food like shellfish or insects. While the range is just one small area of the world, they weather many climate extremes from toasty plateaus and rainforests to the chilly mountainous regions of Tasmania and the Australian Alps. Their dense fur makes fine insulation, both in the water and out. Platypus fur is waterproof and traps an insulating layer of air to keep its body temperature stable, even in cold water. Long guard hairs protect the dense fur underneath, which stays dry even after a platypus has been in the water for hours. Those big webbed feet help propel them through the water and the claws make digging burrows a breeze. The platypus is as fascinating on the inside as it is on the outside. Among Australia's most iconic wildlife, this semi-aquatic, egg-laying species is also one of the few venomous mammals. The Giant Phantom Jelly In over 30 years of conducting deep-sea studies, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute has sent out remotely operated vehicles to the deep sea on thousands of occasions. And yet, this is only the ninth time they've stumbled upon this cagey crimson creature. The deep water robot managed to capture incredibly rare video footage of a giant phantom jelly. At a depth of about 3,200 feet, sunlight has all but faded. Any light that does make it this far is unlikely to contain any warm hues, making the reddish flesh of the jellyfish look particularly black to any nearby eyes. From above, the jelly looks like a hat, sitting on a ghost-like frame draped in dark robes. Close up, the species' 3.3-foot bell can be seen pulsing, its translucent body a crimson-hued shadow with four long tentacles billowing eerily in the background. From further away, the sheer size of the giant becomes even more impressive. The phantom jelly's oral arms can be seen trailing some 33 feet behind its bell. Before roves were invented, scientists used trawling nets to study creatures in the deep sea. But when a giant phantom jelly is scooped up and brought to the surface, researchers say its silky-looking frame turns to gelatinous goo. Spotted Skunks 
Meet the charismatic, but sometimes stinky, Spotted Skunk. Spotted Skunks live throughout North America, from British Columbia to Costa Rica, but aren't easy to find. Five times smaller than striped skunks, the largest spotted skunk species are about as big as a squirrel. They're nocturnal tree climbers who make their homes away from the hustle and bustle of humans. As a result, people and spotted skunks rarely meet, so scientists have had relatively little data to reveal the pint-sized predator's family tree. Over the past two centuries, the number of recognized species has ranged from 2 to 14, often based solely on the animal's appearance and autonomy. While all skunks douse would-be predators with a noxious spray, only the spotted skunk announces its intention to do so in a rather unique fashion, on its front paws and a dramatic handstand with its tail skyward. The acrobatic posture makes the spotted skunk appear more than twice its size, potentially discouraging an attack. Spotted skunks can walk in this position and even stamp their front feet to seem intimidating. And if a potential predator still doesn't get the hint, the skunk will drop back to all fours and spray with remarkable accuracy. They're able to hit their target from up to 12 feet away. Giant Sponge Crab The sponge crab is not often seen due to its nocturnal habits. During the day, they hide in crevices or holes and are usually only seen at night. As their name implies, they decorate themselves with a piece of poisonous sponge, which they trim off a live sponge. The poisonous sponge acts as a deterrent to predators. This behavior is known as aposematism. If the sponge is removed from the crab, it will immediately attempt to obtain another piece. The rear legs are adapted to hold the sponge onto the body. The size of the sponge varies greatly, and some crabs appear to be better than others at trimming the sponge to fit them. Because they change the carapace at regular intervals, they need to redecorate themselves with a piece of sponge every time the carapace is changed. The crab has a widespread distribution in the Indo-Pacific region. Its range extends from East Africa and the Red Sea through the Malay Archipelago, south to Australia, north to China and Japan, and as far east as Hawaii and French Polynesia. It's mostly found in shallow waters, with the deepest record being 367 feet. Sponge crabs are usually only seen at night. During the day, they hide and are well camouflaged. When found, they'll usually scurry away or seek shelter. Leaf-tailed gecko with the ability to grow up to 6 inches in length, these creatures possess an incredible camouflage that allows them to blend right into their forest habitats. Madagascar's mossy leaf-tailed gecko can scatter their shadows, making their outline nearly invisible to predators. One of the facts that distinguish the leaf-tailed gecko is that they have long bodies that can grow 4 to 12 inches in size. Their heads are broad, taking on a triangular shape like that of the angles in their tail. The size of giant leaf-tailed geckos is usually two and a half inches long as babies, growing to be 10 to 12 inches long as adults. Each of the toes of these lizards contain millions of microscopically small plates that allow them to move effortlessly on smooth surfaces. The eyes of these lizards are big and marbled, but the red center of the eye stands out significantly against their body, which typically features green, tan, brown, and gray. The natural colors allow them to easily camouflage within their surroundings, especially because their texture is rough like the leaves and branches of the trees. The mossy leaf-tailed geckos can even camouflage with the moss on the trees. When they lay on a surface, they can flatten their body to keep the illusion that they're merely a leaf in nature. The Skeleton Shrimp These unusual shrimp are easily recognizable because of their slender, elongated bodies. This tiny shrimp, the smallest in the genus, was identified from among specimens originally collected from a cave on sunny Santa Catalina, off the coast of Southern California. Part of a marine family known as skeleton shrimp, only distantly related to the ones some humans love to dip in cocktail sauce, this crustacean is the first of its genus to be reported in the northeastern Pacific. The new species has an eerie, translucent appearance that makes it resemble a bony structure. While outwardly skeleton shrimp look quite different from crabs and lobsters, they're actually closely related. They have branched appendages, two pairs of antenna, the same number of legs, and a similar general body form. The front legs are praying mantis-like claws used for defense, grooming, and food capture. Skeleton shrimp are found usually clinging to algae with their posterior legs. Skeleton shrimp are especially abundant in fowling communities 
which means they're frequently found on docks, pilings, and ropes. Their slender body resembles the very algae they cling to, allowing them to virtually disappear as they wait to ambush prey. Moroccan Flick Flack Spider This spider has some serious moves. The agile spider that somersaults down sand dunes was discovered in the deserts of Morocco. The dancing arachnid has even been nicknamed the Flick Flack Spider for its gymnastic dexterity. The discovery of the Moroccan Flick Flack Spider has influenced biometric robot research, resulting in the development of an experimental robot based on the spider's motion. The spider propels itself off the ground and moves its legs in a flick flack motion to go uphill, downhill, or on ground level. In fact, it moves propel the spider. In fact, the flick flack moves propel the spider across the sand at some six and a half feet per second, which is twice as fast as its walking speed. Using a series of rapid acrobatic flick flack movements of its legs, similar to those used by gymnasts, the spider is able to actively propel itself off the ground allowing it to move both down and uphill, even at a 40% incline. It's the only spider known to use this unique form of rolling locomotion. The Moroccan Flick Flack spider is nocturnal and is known to feed on moths before sunrise. It spends the hot desert days in its cool burrow in the sand, protected from the sun and predators. To protect itself from the sun and predators, the animal weaves tube-like towers in the sand that are held together by silk threads. What will we discover next? The animal kingdom on Earth is vast, so there's bound to be more creatures out there that we had no idea existed. That's the exciting part about the world we live in today. So like and subscribe, there's more to discover coming right up.